Okay, we're going to talk about the Diamond Planet Project, the 3D printed Diamond Planet Project, and the end results. As you can see here, I'm going to move this camera back a little bit so we can get a wider picture so everything isn't so, so closed in, maybe. How's that? Alright, so I've got the uh, two AA batteries and a battery holder down there. The, 3D printed bump and go drive, and the main on off switch, and then there's two idler wheels in the rear. And when you turn it on, you have uh, the clicking sound, the eyes correspond with the clicking, you have the moving meter, the moving arms, and you get the flashing effect in the spark window, which changes. And We'll put it down on the floor here in a second. Just get a little further away so we can get it all in. You do have the uh, hammered metal paint finish in kind of a turquoise blue. And this will be the hard part. Trying to keep the camera where it can see something of the action. Because I can't stare at the camera and at the toy. Bump it into my foot and head it off the other way. It'll circle a little bit till it straightens back out, which it did. See me straight at me, and you can't enjoy that. <clears throat> Let's just set it out here, maybe more. Let it run into the wall and see if it can pull. Yep, yeah, see it turns right away. As it circles around, then it kind of goes into straight. Now it's heading straight into the wall over that way. You can say this uh, room isn't ideal. Isn't ideal for trying to demonstrate a bump and go toy. If you've ever tried videotaping bump and go toys, you'll, you'll know what I'm going through. You can't do it. You need a separate cameraman, you need a bigger room. So, regardless of all of that, it turned out very well. It operates. I did two mechanical things differently. There's two units here. Let's get this back around. Right there. There's this one and that one. And the main difference is mechanically, this is the actually the first one I made. And in this one I wanted the mechanics that move the arms and the meter to have some sort of protection. So if someone grabbed this, they, they wouldn't break the linkage inside. So I actually ended up using, there's a, a pull mechanism and a spring. So it's got a spring, so if you were to grab it and push it down when they're up, then the spring stretches. If they're in the down position, you can lift them up and there it doesn't, there's no problem. This one also is the one that I did all the painting experiments on. So this one actually has about five coats of paint. In some cases, different paints, different techniques trying to uh, get the look that I was after. Here, I've got an arm piece here. So basically, the arms reside in that, and then there's a crank that pulls, and as it pulls, it's going to raise the, the arms up and down, as you can see. But if someone were to grab the arm, then the spring would just stretch. And that's what I did on the first one. And... Um, even though it works, that means if I made more of them, I'd have to try to come up with the same springs and and this little coupler between the spring and the arm would have to be the right length. And So I decided, okay, I'll just go back to the standard way of doing this sort of thing, which is just a mechanical link that's solid between the cam that's doing the pulling on the arm and on that, and then change the arms, where if you see the arm here, this is solid because it's glued right under the arm axle. On this one, there's a recess, and in there there's a screw, which screws the arm into the arm axle. And depending on how tight you make that screw, you can then position the arm, and it won't pull on the linkage inside. So you could have your arms in any position you wanted. So I'm with that because it's simpler. Um, for the metal details, I fell back on something that I used to use back in the 1980s on my things. 
and that's the uh, aluminum foil tape. It's a duck tape for sealing up ducks, and it's a metal foil tape. And uh, because it's such thin aluminum, you can get it to shape and uh, go around things quite nicely. Then you just clean up the excess with an uh, X-Acto knife, and it works out quite well. Um, as far as the exact color, <clears throat> I can still buy the hammered in what they call silver, but it's really kind of a gray. And I was going to go ahead and use that as a default, and I also tried some tests with it. This is a spray can of Rust-Oleum's hammered, as you can see. And in this case, they call it their Verde Green, but to me it looked um, more turquoise. And it's very blue, it's very green, it's very turquoise. It reminded me a lot of the uh, original toy that I had on the bench for a while. So I went with this one. I had to pay a premium for it, a slight premium. It was like 25 or 26 bucks or something, and then another $10 shipping. So under 40 bucks. Painted both robots, and I'd say I probably still have half a can. So there's still plenty of paint in here. Uh, but before I before this arrived, I had ordered it in the hopes that it would arrive, and it was a real deal. I experimented with a can of the hammered silver, and I decanted it, which means I, re I released all of the uh, the propellant pressure from the can, and then poked a hole in it so I could just pour all of the thin paint out into a mason jar. So then I had all of the uh, hammered silver paint already nice and thin in a jar, and I took uh, another spray can of, uh, since the one I had was silver, not this color, of just blue that was basically the same types of Rust-Oleum paint <clears throat> and decanted and poured it in. So now I had the blue mixed with the silver. I wanted to see what kind of color it would come up with. And it, because the silver isn't really silver and it's more of a gray, it just kind of ended up being like a, a dirty blue. It wasn't very pleasing. But I still wanted to experiment with it and see if I could then apply it. And since it was already thin, my first uh, thought was, well, let's try uh, an airbrush. So I tried airbrushing the parts with it. And the problem with an airbrush is the name it's in the name. The air goes through the brush, which sucks the paint, whether it's a top feeder or a bottom feeder, it doesn't matter. It's the venturi action that sucks the paint in. So you always have 50% or more of what's coming out of the end of the airbrush is air. So airbrushes tend to put things on dry and not real wet. And in the case of uh, these hammered things, you need to put them on thick and you need to put them on wet. And so I wasn't able to get the hammer effect to uh, to work with an airbrush. I even tried uh, my air-powered um, guns used for retouching body work and body finishing on car. <clears throat> but basically, you come down to the same problem. It's, it's mixing air with the paint, which you don't want to do. See, in a can like this, the uh, propellant, which is a, a gas, some say it's propane, could be whatever, um, never mixes with the paint. The From the spray head all the way down to the bottom of the can, see how this is domed going off to one side? There's a hose that goes all the way down to the bottom. And the propellant's up here, and the paint is down here. And all the propellant is pushing on the top of the paint. And the paint itself, already pre-thinned, is then pulled up through, well, pushed up through the tube and then out the nozzle. So all you get out is just pure paint. It's not mixed 50% with a propellant or air or anything else. So you can put on a very wet coat, a very heavy coat. <clears throat> so I couldn't imitate that. And then this can finally arrived and I just went with this and called it good. And it, I am pleased with the way it looks. Um, whether or not you want to take a peek inside, I guess, why don't we, why don't we go ahead and open Let's open this guy up. Now these could just be glued together when they were made, but I knew since I was still working on different mechanics and testing things, I said, why not just uh, drill some holes and use some small number two screws, self-tapping screws to hold them together. That way you can take it apart and make changes. And also, that way I can show you guys the 
the insides of what's going on. Most of the other videos already showed all the parts, how they were going to fit together and all that good stuff. But it might be better if you actually see it. I'm only going to take the back off. There's really no reason to ever take the front off. So the front could have been glued onto the lower frame. You'll have to, I'll put links to the uh, other build videos showing the, the, the CAD design, the uh, initial 3D printing design. And here's the, the back piece off. Can you kind of see the hammered effect maybe depending on how the lighting in the room is? Turned out really nice. It's a very good color for a, for a robot. <clears throat> and here's the arm linkage piece. You can see it's just an arm. It comes all the way up from this cam down here. On this part here, I actually put little eyelets. Um, they came with some servos that I had. Put, pushed eyelets into the uh, ends of the cam so that the screws wouldn't uh, chew up this long linkage piece. And there's a, a slot, as you can see, in the end of that. See that's yeah, right there. See that slot? That's going to interface with the screw, and that's the meter movement. Let's see how that's going to go from one end to the other. So as the arm moves, get it where the camera can see. There, see how the screw is inside that slot? Here, let's uh, let's turn things on. The arms may fall out, but we'll see. So there you can see how that linkage moves everything, and then how the the little screw on the meter movement moves, and you can actually see the linear slide gear moving. And from the front, it gives you that action. The clicking and the flashing of the eyes is right. We get that. There we can sort of get it. Here, let's turn it more. There you go. It's that piece of spring steel there. And every time it's pulled out, that's when the eyes go out and back on. The uh, <clears throat> the battery box is just glued in, but then then the two wires come up. You can get it where we can get some of it on camera. See how they poke through. I'll run one of the wires. In this case, I ran the positive wire down to that switch. And then I take another wire off the switch. And I wanted a nice common point where I could connect all the other positives. So on the, the light flasher, on the clicker, on the brass piece, I figured that was a good place to bring them all up. So bring the positive from the switch up to there. Then I can bring the positive from the bump and go motor up to there. I can bring the positive from the little uh, N20 motor that's running this cam up to there. I can bring the positive from the two LEDs that are flashing it for the spark window down here. And uh, as far as the positive from the eyes, which they have their own dropping resistor up here, it's a little different because this is the one that's flashing. So it comes up and then solders to the actual clicker piece so it can turn on and off. When the piece of metal is down it would be on and when the piece of metal is lifted away the light would be off. As far as all of the ground connections I decided to bring all of the ground wires to the little N20 motor where it's ground wires. So I brought the battery box ground up, the bump and go ground up. We're already soldering to the N20 motor so it gets its ground, the ground for the flashing uh, lights and the ground from the eyes. I'll bring them down and solder them to that one common point. So it makes it kind of easy. Okay, have I got everything ready? Let's just slip this back on there. When I glued the uh, ears on, I just glued them to the back half so they'll actually kind of work like a shim to hold the, the front together. And if I was going to glue the thing together, I would put a little drop of glue on the ears to kind of secure the top of the head and make sure everything is held safely together. But there you have it. Turned out, uh, turned out rather well. 
It's all the functions that I wanted in a battery operated version of the Diamond Planet robot. It's cosmetic, it's very pleasing. And the paint job is uh, really what I had in mind. So I'm very happy.